the economic roles of the Periochoi and the Helots. Now, we know there was three great groups in ancient Sparta. There was the Spartiates, who were number one. They were the military people who spent their lives training in the military. And then there was the lower group of the Periochoi, and then the even lower group of the Helots. So that's what we'll be looking at in this, in this lesson. The Periochoi were free inhabitants of land around Sparta. So they weren't slaves, they were free, and they inhabited the land around Sparta. They were not Spartan citizens, so they didn't, they didn't have all the rights and privileges of the, the actual Spartans, but they were living around the land. They did not have the same rights of Spartan citizens, so they, they didn't have their, their own land they would live on, they didn't have the right to vote, and they, you know, they had other restrictions. They could not marry Spartan men and women. So isn't that interesting? You're, you're not allowed to marry someone. Uh, it's like a, a, a lawyer today saying, oh, you, you, no one can, you know, a carpenter can't marry my daughter because he's too low or something like that. That's what it was like. The word perioikoi means dwellers around. And that's quite a good word because that's what they were doing. They were dwelling around. They were mainly involved in mining, manufacture, commerce, and all mineral and marine resources of Laconia and Messenia were in Perakoi hands. So they played a very important role in society, but they were kind of doing a lot of hard work like mining, which the other Sp the Spartans might not have wanted to do. They procured the metals. They manufactured the weapons that kept the Spartan military operating. Ancient writers such as Pliny and Herodotus mention the Periquoi as making shoes, purple garments, objects of wood and iron. So they were doing a lot of things. They played a critically important role in society, but they still weren't as high up as the Spartans themselves. Now this is a really good map of ancient Greece. You can see the map of ancient Greece and down here you have uh, the region of Laconia and Sparta. And here, of course, in this region is the, uh, the, the, the port at Githium. So that's where a lot of trade took place. So Githium was the main centre for the delivery of Spartan imports and exports. And I just find it interesting that they were importing and exporting. You know, in Australia today, we import and export things all over the world. We trade with China and Japan. But even thousands of years ago, the Spartans were trading with other places too. I just find it amazing how much they traded in the ancient world. Githium was located about 46 kilometres from Sparta on the Laconian coast. The fishermen, shipwrights, naval personnel at Githium were peri periochoi. So isn't that amazing? I think that's, that's extraordinary that they played such an important role, and yet they still weren't considered as high up as the Spartans themselves. A favourite leisure activity of the Spartans was chariot racing. So you can see the, the chariot over here, they're really enjoying themselves. And a lot of people in the ancient world like chariot racing. In ancient Rome, they had the Circus Maximus. About a quarter of a million people would go and watch chariot racing at the Circus Maximus in Rome. So chariot racing was popular in ancient Greece and Rome. And of course, in Egypt, they had chariots as well. It was the Periochoi who made or imported the chariots. So there you go, they're even playing a role in that. I think it's quite amazing that they were doing all these things. Some Periochoi who were prosperous, and prosperous enough, such as Nicocles Acria, was able to compete at Olympia. So remember, it was the ancient Greeks who started the Olympics. The ancient Greeks had the first Olympics in 776 BC, and every four years they'd get athletes from all over Greece, from all the different city-states, to compete They'd go to Olympia and they would, they would compete at those Olympics. And this is just one example of a, a person who's made a bit of money for himself and the, had the opportunity to participate in those events. Periochoi shared in the land division, although it's not sure what percentage they were given. According to Plutarch, Lycurgus originally distributed 30,000 allotments to the Periochoi. But the shadowy nature of the Lycurgan reforms make it difficult to know whether this was a single handout or not. 
the helots were the enslaved population of Messenia and Laconia. So they were the slaves, they did a lot of the agricultural work, um, so they were you know, beneath the other two groups, the Spartiates and the Periochoi, and uh, they were just the enslaved population. So if you were going to live in ancient Sparta, you wouldn't want to be these people, they, they were the lowest of the three groups. And there's, there's a, some bad stories that, you, that I've heard about or read about, about the helots. You know, for example, the Spartan soldiers would be training, you know, Spartan teenage boys would be training and they might go and kill a helot to, to practice how to kill someone. So, you know, the helots were not treated very well at all. And uh, later on, after the Battle of Leuctra, when the Spartans were defeated, uh, the Messenians ended up being freed. So um, when Sparta sort of went down, it was the Messenians who got their freedom. They were owned by the Spartan state, so they were the, the slaves. And it's quite interesting because they weren't owned by so much by individuals. You know, in ancient Rome you had slavery where an individual would buy a slave. Uh, but th they were actually owned by the state, they were owned by the government. So that's a bit of an interesting twist on slavery, a bit of an interesting way of doing it. Helots worked for individual Spartiates on their estates. So they were owned by the government and they worked for individual Spartiates on their estates. Remember it was the Spartiates who had the land. Uh, they were the highest ranking citizens, they would devote themselves to the military and it was the Helots who would do the work for them on their estates. And, rem and remember it was often the women Spartiates who would own the estates. At one point about two-thirds of the land was owned by, by, the, by the Spartiat women. So that gives us some idea of the, the lives of the Spartiates and the Helots and the Periochoi.